wait a minute, wait a but but, but <coughs> why do you need to do the high knees if the Wolverine blood just kind of takes over and naturally <laughs> heals you? You don't need to do all that stuff. The, I haven't written about this yet, but there is something off here as it relates to the effort to make sure everybody knows all about the injury. Yeah, right. 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 Because then if you stink, that's your excuse. Yeah. He's heroic. He tried to play through the injury. If you play well, you're a hero because you're like Willis Reed. You overcame the injury. And the Bill Parcells attitude toward this, which I'm sure your dad knows very well, is you just don't talk about this stuff at all. Because you don't want to do anything. And this was articulated last year by Scott Pioli, his son-in-law and the former GM of the Chiefs and worked with the Patriots. If you And this is the Parcells mindset. If you talk about it at all, you're separating yourself from the team. You're putting yourself above the team. And you're either saying, here's my excuse for not playing well, or here's why you should worship me even more because I overcame that injury. It's just not something that should be such a focal point. And sometimes it organically becomes a focal point. Sure. But the player and his representatives should never be part of of making it a focal point. I guarantee you the fact that Russell Wilson has a partial tear of the hamstring was not leaked to reporters last weekend by the Broncos. That came from Russell Wilson's camp. A hundred percent. I mean, it just seems like that and the lat injury there. It's all part of the, the damage control that's, you know, and, and, and changing the perception or trying to, you know, fight what's being said out there by the Russell Wilson camp. And to your point, yeah, you know, People just, they don't want to hear it, let alone, if it happens organically, it happens organically. That's right. But the way it's happened, certainly going to have people in the locker room wondering what we are like, oh, damn, he's releasing that to make excuses and whatever else. And, you know, to, to your point too, with like the Parcells thing or whatever else, it's just like, there, there's guys in that locker room who play middle linebacker and defensive tackle who trust me, they don't feel like a spring chicken. They don't feel good right now. They're beat up. They're playing with a shoulder that's like half hanging on or, you know, a hamstring that's also got a slight tear in it or something. And they're, they're not getting, you know, the excuse factor for them. Uh, so that's where it just it's, again, part of the bylaws of, you know, the NFL locker room. Don't make excuses. Can you play? Then shut up and play. And you were good enough to be out there. And we don't want to hear about, oh, you had a little ding here and a little ding there and whatever else. And that's. You know, again, where Russell Wilson can rub people wrong, the wrong way. And he's got to be careful about that, that it's always this public, you know, what do I want to say? Public, you know, fight of, of changing the, 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 the word out there on him or whatever, the perception on him. Sorry, couldn't find the word. There's an, there's an earnestness to him. Mm. He's trying too hard. Yeah. Just yesterday, all smiles. Nobody with the Broncos should be all smiles right now. I don't care. Oh, we're, we're playing a game in London. Who cares? You're two and five. Who cares where you're playing the game? Who cares that you're ambassadors for the Shield right now? You're two and five. There's nothing to be happy about. There's nothing to be smiling about. You're two and five, and you're staring at two and six against the Jaguars. Who knows? I mean, the Jaguars at one point were two and one, and they were up 14 points over the Philadelphia Eagles, and this is not going to be an easy game for the Broncos. And really, but for the one drive that they managed to cobble together at the end of the week three Sunday night game against the 49ers, They'd be one and six right now. Yeah, I, I know. And and again, that's that's they got issues on that side of the ball. They do. Russell Wilson's got to start playing better. Period. He's definitely the biggest issue with the team right now. And you know his play has added to everybody being scrutinized even more. And then you know, let alone yeah, he's had some people pile on him and all that. But I don't think he's helping himself out. I don't think he's even helping himself out right there with what he said there. You know, again, it seems gratuitous. It's, you know, hey, the rest of my team was zonked out, but I'm sitting there. I was working. I'm doing th I'm doing high knees in the, in the aisle, right, and all that. It, it's just like it's kind of breaking the man code where guys are just like, man, I guarantee people in the locker room be like, man, I wish he would Rolling just out. shut up yeah. and go play football. But throw a touchdown for us and then tell us about your high knees in the aisle of the plane. You know, there's a point here where you got to play if you want to be that good, yeah, but that guy. I mean, you got to play good if you want to be that guy, you know, and, and when you're not playing good, nobody wants to hear that kind of crap. And that's that's where he's got to be careful a little bit.
It kind of reminds me when he's telling that about the guy who says, hey, I got a funny story for you. Well, when has a funny story ever followed that, hey, I got a funny story for you, and it's <laughs> yeah. something about me. It's something I did. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you something I did so you'll be impressed by me. That had that vibe to it. Yeah. He didn't have to wedge all that in there. There wasn't a, a, an interrogation of, so, Russell, what did you do for the first hour? On the plane. Yeah. Okay, what did you do for the second hour on the plane? Well, tell us what you did in hour number three. He just launched into that, talking about himself. And you're right. Guys in the locker room. That ain't cool. I mean, it's not even cool. My Aunt Wendy's texting me right now. She's watching the show. She's going, like, really, Russell? That's what she's saying. Like, it's, it's again, I think it's everybody going, like, hey. come on. Just hey. shut up and play here. Stop with the always the public, you know, trying to transform the conversation around you. Rule of thumb, if you've lost Aunt Wendy. Yeah, you're in trouble. You've lost. Aunt, you've lost. Aunt. That's right. You're done. Hello, Aunt Wendy. <laughs> How are you? Happy birthday, belated. She's Aunt always Wendy. watching. Okay. Always watching. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.